Hi, welcome to Data Engineering and today we are going to discuss about how to submit a job, a Spark job in Dataproc and how to execute it. So here, uh, one more, one important thing I want to say is Dataproc uh, job, whenever you, whenever you enter into Dataproc, Spark job is called as Dataproc job. So don't get confused. When someone say Dataproc job, it's a Spark job. Okay. So Dataproc is a fully managed Hadoop Spark cluster by Google. It's a big data as a service, which has the pre-installed cluster setup will be there and you don't want to set up or install anything. So just, I, I highly recommend you to watch my previous video. I have given that link in the description box of this video in which I have explained what is Dataproc and how to create a cluster. Fine. So now what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to read BigQuery data and then I'll tell you what is BigQuery and then I'm going to process it in Spark. It's a Spark job, but we call it as a Dataproc job. Dataproc job. Okay, and then finally the processed output, I'm going to write it in BigQuery again. Okay, so now here, what is BigQuery? So generally uh, outside the world of cloud, you imagine, so we have a mission and in which I installed a single node Hadoop and Spark. And then uh, if I'm going to write a Spark job, I'm going to read it from HDFS or Hive. And then again, I'm going to write it back to Hive or HDFS. This is what you people have done, right? And before, after entering into this data proc client kind of clouds, uh, environment, right? So BigQuery is a query engine, a data warehouse query engine. It's not into big data, but it's 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 a data warehouse where you can do ETL provided by Google. Only when you come to Google Cloud, you can use it or else you can't. So this BigQuery is an alternate for Hive, I can say, in a simple word. So that means we are reading it from Hive, processing it in Spark, again, writing the output back to Hive. So the same way in Dataproc, I'm reading it from a BigQuery and I'm doing a process in Spark job and that is called Dataproc job and finally writing to BigQuery. It's like an end-to-end -end project, right? So now, whenever, when you use this Dataproc thing, right? Finally, before writing to BigQuery, what Dataproc will do is, it just used to store the data temporarily to a cloud storage cloud storage it's like a it's like a temporary storage for a big bigquery to export the output before storing the data as a table in bigquery so bigquery needs it so data proc it will export the bigquery output in a cloud storage temporarily by creating a file and a directory it will store the output here and then it is export to bigquery so this is how it happens so cloud storage is a service that we have it in Google Cloud, it is similar to our HDFS, but it's not a file system, similar to HDFS. And if you are aware of Amazon Web Service, right, there we have something called S3. So this cloud storage and S3 and all, uh, like uh, it is there in AWS and Google Cloud, where any services can use the file which you have stored in cloud storage and uh, same as S3 as well. So any services in Google Cloud can able to read and write the data from cloud storage. So cloud storage uh, used to store everything uh, like any structural data, like structure, semi-structure, unstructure in an object format but it is not a file system or a database. So with respect to writing it before BigQuery, it exports the data temporarily in a cloud storage and then it writes to BigQuery. This is what. So we are going to use the components like cloud storage, data proc, and then BigQuery. Okay, fine. So now what I'm going to do is read the data from BigQuery. It's a table. BigQuery has everything as a table, row column. So I'm going to read a data from the table and I'm going to do a process. My ETL process will happen here with Spark. We call it as data proc job and then write it back to BigQuery. So, okay. So now you can ask me like uh, after writing it to BigQuery, who is going to consume the data? We are downstream. So the data which we get from is upstream. The data which you are going to give after the processing is downstream. A downstream could be an another data team or a downstream could be a reporting team where they used to use some visualization tools to connect and generate the report and hand it over to the client. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so now you can ask me like what type of program you are going to show you for this particular project. So I'm want to make this video very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use word count, a traditional example. So the, the input for the word count is words, right? So this words already presented as a table in BigQuery, uh, which is already there in BigQuery. You don't want to create it. It's default. It is there. So I have to query the table and then process it here and then write it back to BigQuery, the final uh, counted words in the BigQuery has two columns in a table, right? So that is what we are going to do here. Fine. So let's get into the practical. And if you see here, I have the steps. So first thing you have to create a data set in BQ. 
when I say BQ, it is BigQuery short form BQ. So MK, you are creating a data set. You can ask me like, what is the data set? So generally we call database in Hive and RDBMS, right? A database is equal to data set in BQ. So for creating it, you have to use MK BQ command. So I have to create a data set. It's like a database. So I have already created a cluster and how to create a cluster. The video is there in my previous, you can, the topic is there in my previous video. You can refer it. And it is free. Some credits are free. With that, you can practice all this. So the data set has been created. Fine. So now I'm going to create a, a bucket. So bucket means it's like a folder that you create in the cloud storage. I showed you in the diagram, right? So before writing the Spark job, before writing into BigQuery, it exports the output in cloud storage for temporary and then it write to BigQuery. So for uh, your data proc to export the data, we are creating a cloud storage bucket. It's like a place where you create a folder and the folder is equal to bucket. In Amazon also, in S3, we call it as bucket. The folders are called bucket. So you have to create a bucket and this bucket name should be unique across the globe. It's not unique within your login, across the logins. It should be unique. So gsutil is a command uh, which we use to create uh, or communicate with the cloud storage. It's like how you use HDFS commands to communicate with HDFS file system, Hadoop, DF or HDFS, DFS, right? Similar to it. And MB is make bucket. So I'm just going to create a bucket now. Okay, so the bucket is created. Now let's get into the program. So they have shared this in, in Dataproc website itself. They have this code and I have given the code link in the description box of this video. So they have given the code for Spark Shell as well as for uh, uh, IDEs like IntelliJ and Eclipse. So, so if you uncomment this piece, right, you can create a .scala file in Eclipse or IntelliJ. You can create a jar file, you can submit it. So if you want to use only Spark shell, then you can start from line number 19. So I'm going to create a file first. So I'm going to use a Spark shell. So I'm just going to create a file vi wordcount.scala and I'm going to place my code here. Okay, so before that, uh, let me explain you uh, or I'll just go through you th uh, this code. I'll just give a walkthrough. So I'll just change my, so what is the data set that we have created is data set underscore one. Okay, so the full data set name is word count underscore TS underscore data set one. And then the bucket name that I've created is, it's 1993. So let me remove this comment. I've just commented it for some other purpose. Let me remove it. So now this code as is what I've showed in the notepad. So it's the bucket we created is 1993. Let me change it, fine. So this is a code. So this is a bucket uh, that you are created for the Spark job to finally write it, export the output before loading it to BQ. Now here you are reading it. So I'm reading it from a BigQuery table and here I'm giving the table name in BigQuery. So data set dot table name. Okay, so till sample, it is data set name. Shakespeare is a table name. So this has words. So I'm reading it and then I'm creating a temporary table words and then I'm using a spark SQL to achieve this word counting. You can use data frames also. And finally, I'm writing it to word count df dot write dot format BigQuery. And here you can see this is our target data set and the table. So this table name word count underscore output will be created automatically. So only thing what we have to do is you have to give the data set name which you have created. That's it. Now save this code. Now you have to enter into Spark shell. So to enter into Spark shell, uh, you have to give spark hyphen shell and you have to pass this dependency jar as well. So what is this jar for? So now our data proc is going to communicate with BigQuery, right? For reading and writing. So you need a connector for spark job to connect with BigQuery. So this is a connector jar provided by Google itself. So you have to use this. So if it is a spark submit, so as I told you here, we are not going to use the word spark submit to submit your jar file. Instead, you have to use cloud data proc submit and then you have to give this dependency jar name and then you have to give your jar name the word count jar and then spark memory executor memory so on so stuff so now i am going to use spark shell only enter so you have to use this dependency jar when you are logging into spark shell else bigquery connection will not be get established so after entering into it you can run the program so from spark shell also you can able to run a scala file so after entering into it i am going to run my scala file Okay, now we are into Scala. I'm going to execute word count Scala. So it's reading the bucket. Now the word count process will get start. 
and we have print schema on the show so it will show you the output first 20 records it will show you so now the word count job started so once this is completed so next again it will start to write it to bigquery like first it exports the data in the cloud storage bucket which you have mentioned and then it writes to bigquery table so now you can see the sample output and the print schema like you have two columns so now bigquery write is happening it is completed now i'll show you in bigquery okay so for that you have to enter into your google console click here go to bigquery sql workspace so when you get into sql workspace you will be seeing this window i'll just refresh because we created uh, we created a new data set right so let me refresh it in left hand side you can able to see the list of data sets which we have created okay so now if we expand this so you will be seeing the data set so this is the last data set is what we created right word count ts yes, data set 1 this is what we created if you see within this you have a table so this got created on the fly so so our data set name is word count underscore ts underscore data set underscore 1 and then the table name is word count underscore output so now run it so this is your bigquery actually it's like similar to hive this is a bigquery console you will be seeing your output i'm just giving limit 10 that's it right so uh, this is what like end to end like we discussed so uh, i hope you like this video if you really like this video please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and we do have complete big data videos uh, the playlist link i have given it's in the description box it's almost 60 plus videos complete course you can complete with that videos itself so and i also have created a new channel for digital marketing but if you are interested you can just go through that new channel as well and please do support us for that new channel as well thanks for watching